a lot to talk about. Roy Moore, Saudi Arabia, Libya. What a show we've got for you and for youths that I, I, you just have to wait and see for yourself. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. What makes something right or wrong? Dun, 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 dun. I'll pick what you believe for 500. No, wrong answer. It's not what you believe that makes something right or wrong. What you believe may be true or false. What you and I believe might be right or wrong. But belief is not the starting point for ethics. There's only two options. Option number one is that somebody created a fixed standard of right and wrong. It doesn't change. Option two is that that does not exist and everything else. In, in other words, society decides what's right and wrong. A majority decides what's right and wrong. The Supreme Court decides what's right and wrong. The barrel of a gun decides what's right and wrong. Force. You, me, individuals get to choose what is right and wrong. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe it. You get to choose for yourself what you believe is right and what you believe is wrong. Now the reason I, I'm starting the show this way, we're going to talk about Judge Moore. I'm going to play for you his response to the allegations. But <clears throat> the Media Matters people, these are uh, Media Matters in America. This is a, a left-wing organization. The, the man who runs it, his first name is Angelo. I forget his last name. I'll get it for you in a second. But he is a, what would be called a quintessential God-hater. He hates biblical ethics. Hates them. Now, the funny thing about somebody who does not believe in a fixed morality is that they believe in it when it comes to them. So here's what I mean. He would be happy to support a government takeaway of property. All right, He's happy to steal people's money through unjust, unholy, unrighteous taxes. All right? We're going to play the Roy Moore clip in the next segment. So he, he's happy to say, all right, if you make this much money, we're going to take 39% of your money. We're going to take 45, 50, whatever it is that he feels is right. Because he gets to feel it. He gets to think it. All leftists, all people on the political left, socialists, communists, hedonists, they get to choose in their worldview, in their insane, their ethically depraved worldview, they get to choose what is right and wrong. So, they're happy to steal, at the point of a gun, someone else's income. Because that's ultimately what taxes are. The government has the ability to force you through arrest, imprisonment, forcible taking of your goods by seizing bank accounts, etc. He's willing to force people to give up their income. But if somebody comes to his house, you see where this is going, and steals 20 or 30% of his his chattel goods, his car. Let's say the man owns five cars. Well, you're going to give up one of them. You're going to give up two of them. I mean, just take it. Then he likes the commandment, thou shalt not steal. Then he likes the commandment, you shall not covet. So th that's the bizarre thing about these people <clears throat> who hate God and hate his commandments. They want to pick and choose when the echo of the commandment of God is applicable for themselves. See, the beauty of the, the, the commandments of God is that they apply to everyone equally. Okay? You shall not steal applies to everyone. The problem is that many people fail to see that, just focusing again on economics, that God himself only takes only requires, asks for, however you want to say it, 10%. If, it's, if you're poor, it's 10%. If you're wildly wealthy, it's 10%. It's the same across the board. 
government says, no, we're going to have these people pay nothing. And then we're going to take from these people and we're going to give it to them forcibly. Okay. So this is a violation of <clears throat> the fourth commandment, six days labor and the seventh day rest. It's a violation of the eighth commandment. You shall not steal. Or depending on how you break down the commandments, I'm sorry. Sixth commandment is thou shalt not steal. Um, it's a violation of the 10th commandment. You shall not covet. In part, it's a violation of the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me because the people who are happy to cry out to the government to take care of them, <clears throat> the government for them has become another god, another parent. So there's all this violation of the commandments of God, which they're totally happy to do. But then when someone wants to steal from them, then they, no, 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 that's wrong. So the question I ask these people is, well, who are you to say what's right or wrong? If somebody gets to make up the rules, why can't they say that for them it's right that they take your bicycle or your motorcycle or your car? I mean, you're the one who said that everyone can choose for themselves what's right and wrong. Who are you to impose your morality on someone else? I'll be right back. We're going to have fun with this, and we're going to show the clip from Judge Ray Moore. Don't go away. Today, many so-called Christian intellectuals believe that the God of evolution used billions of years of death and destruction to evolve the bodies of the first human beings. Then, they simply declare the theory of evolution as fact to justify their unproven scientific fallacies. By the grace of God, more and more Catholics are rejecting this modern-day mythology in favor of the traditional doctrine of creation as recorded by the Bible and believed and taught by all the fathers and doctors of the church. To find out how sound theology and natural science confirm the sacred history of Genesis, visit the Colby Center for the Study of Creation and be sure to check out our bookstore which has titles like, I Have Spoken to You from Heaven, A Catholic Defense of Creation in Six Days, and A Catholic Assessment of Evolutionary Theory. That's the Colby Center for the Study of Creation. When somebody rejects the moral absolutes of the laws of God, or law, if you want to say it singularly, they are in a moral free fall. Anything goes. It's just what you can pull off, what's tasteful at the time. I mean, do the math. So when we see the left wing, those who hate God, they reject his laws, when we see them clamor for the head on a pike of somebody like Judge Roy Moore, we need to be suspect. Now, I'm going to play Judge Moore's uh, clips of Judge Moore saying that these allegations against him are false. In the, his denial, you will see the references to what he's being accused of, and then I'm gonna talk to you more clearly when we come back. Just two days ago, the Washington Post established, or published rather, yet another attack on my character and reputation in a desperate attempt to stop my political campaign for the United States Senate. These attacks involve a minor and they are completely false and untrue about something that happened nearly 40 years ago. To be attacked for allegations of sexual misconduct contradicts my entire career in law. I want to make it clear to the media present and to the people present, I have not provided alcohol beverages, alcoholic beverages, beer, or anything else to a minor. I have not been guilty of sexual misconduct with anyone. These allegations came only four and a half weeks before the general election on December 12th. Why now? I've been investigated more than any other person in this country. To think that grown women would wait 40 years to come before, right before an election, to bring charges is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Why now? This article is a prime example of fake news an attempt to divert attention from the true issues which affect our country, like health care, military readiness, tax reform, immigration, and national debt. We do not intend to let the Democrats or the established Republicans 
or anybody else behind this story stop this campaign. All right, there you have it. One thing is certain, that Judge Moore, who was twice the, the Chief Justice of the State's Supreme Court of Alabama, twice removed from office because he stood for the Ten Commandments once and stood for the against homosexual marriage the second time. One thing is certain is that this man has undergone more scrutiny than most politicians alive. All right? Now, I've been pondering the, the, the double standard, the duplicity. You will remember a couple years ago it came out that Bill Clinton was hobnobbing with somebody who had, uh, this is one of those segments where you need to have children go out of the room. There was a man who was actually arrested and he had underage girls and all kinds of wild parties and things that are just unspeakable. And Bill Clinton was a friend of his and was coming and going fr from this private island. The, the known under testimony uh, situations that happened with Bill Clinton, they're known, all right? But, and, and what Hillary did to those women is also known. There's a long public record. Some of it is judicial record and some of it is just public record, people talking. And, but the issue is that the press, when they go after Judge Roy Moore or when they ignore Bill Clinton, just that one element, okay? Just look at the, the two standards. It's not that the press cares about what's going on with Judge Moore, the accusations against him, any more than it's that they care about the accusations against Bill Clinton. It's that they want this, at the end of the day, all of this boils down to two things. The ability to kill their children with impunity and the ability for them to have sex with anyone they want, anytime they want, anywhere they want. That's what it boils down to. Homosexual behavior, debauched behavior, and then the ability to kill their offspring. It always will boil down to that, people. Whether they even understand it or not, the spiritual dynamic that is at play here, the satanic element that is at play, is that the God-haters want the ability and the so-called right to kill their offspring. Now, don't get me wrong. Please don't misunderstand me. Assaults against women are demonic, they're evil, they're sinful. Okay? That's, that's the truth. So what's happening in Hollywood is it implodes over one person after another. We, we, we just get weary of even talking about it on this program. I've stopped covering it because they just keep coming out. But this is the same Hollywood that produces movies, that glorifies all kinds of sexual debauchery, glorifies it, right? So then when something happens that is distasteful to them, they can't say that it's wrong in their worldview. We can say it's wrong to kill your baby, it's wrong to have sex outside of marriage with anyone, Homosexual behavior is inherently evil. We can say those things. And we can say it is wrong to use force against a woman for sexual activity. It is wrong to have sex with minors. Right? We can, we can say these things because we have a fixed standard of ethics. If somebody fails in one of these things, they say, I have sinned. I've done the wrong thing. God forgive me. Okay? If there's a criminal act involved, then there's criminal consequences. Okay? We get it. They don't get it. They don't want to get it. So when I have these debates, for those, because this, this section is going to come back. This, this section of this show will come back. Some debauched, God-hating hypocrite is going to use this section. But I'll, I'll cut right to the end of the chase. What I have, the, the debate that I use in, in college settings when I speak all over the country, I've used it for years. Who are you to say that Adolf Hitler was wrong? Well, it's just wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, it's wrong to, to kill another human being or to be anti-Semitic. Says who? Well, we all know that it's just wrong. Says who? What, what? Hitler didn't think it was wrong. The Nazis didn't think it was wrong. Who are you to impose your morals on them? At the end of the day, ethics is the Waterloo, or are. Ethics are the Waterloo of agnosticism and atheism and hedonism. 
Because if they don't have a God in their worldview, which they don't, with fixed standard morality, at the end of the day, they have no basis to oppose any behavior or endorse any behavior because it, it's, like the, it's like evolution, the survival of the fittest. They believe that we evolved from primal slime and that ethics are just the fruit of our progress. And we all know that there have been times in human history when slavery and rape and uh, uh, infanticide, putting babies out to die, abortion, all kinds of temple prostitution and sexual debauchery. We know that there, there were times in, in world history, in Roman history, in Greek history with pedophilia. We know that these things existed and they were normal and they were acceptable at the time. Have Muslim terrorists hijacked the peaceful religion of Islam? Or is there more to the story? The answer lies in the life of one man, Muhammad, the founder of Islam. Muslim terrorists see themselves inside a 1,400-year-old story, a narrative that focuses on specific events in the life of Muhammad. We are going to look at Muhammad's life using their most sacred literature. We will look at Muhammad at the Battle of Badr. We'll see him deal with those who mock him. We'll see the times when he used deception. We'll witness Muhammad's anti-Semitism. And yes, we will discuss Muhammad and his teachings concerning sex, slavery, and jihad. Friend, if you want to understand Islamic terrorism, get this series today. The nation of Libya is in shambles due largely to Hillary Clinton. You can do research on your own, look at old shows here. What I wanted to bring to your attention was that there is slavery, there's slave trading going on right now in Libya, <clears throat> right now. People are being sold on the auction block. CNN did a story on it and they interviewed a man named Victory who was from Nigeria who was trying to get to Europe and was paying, saved up money for years and was paying people along the way and was going to get on a boat and then go to Europe. And his friends made it, but he was kidnapped and sold as a slave and then his family ransom, ransomed him back. It took about nine months to get him out. Grown man in his 20s. And again, to come all the way back to our discussion about media and they don't, what they leave out. His name was Victory, all right? That's not a Muslim name, in case anyone wonders, okay? That is a Christian name. All right, and he was captured and then sold and then ransomed. All right, now listen to me. Part of Islamic law, Sharia law, is the right for Muslims under certain circumstances to kidnap or to in war capture somebody, then kill them, make them a slave, or ransom them. They're not allowed to do it to fellow Muslims, but they're allowed to do it to non-Muslims, okay? So CNN left that out of the story. Slavery's been going on for years, centuries under Islamic law. There's a book called White Gold that deals with Libya in the 17 and 1800s. A lot of the, a lot of the slaves that came to America were captured and sold by Islamic slave traders who were capturing non-Muslims and selling them. That's a part of Islam, people. It's just a part of Islamic law. It's a part of Islamic history. And it's exactly what CNN will leave out. And why will they leave it out? Because they will attack Christianity because of the demonic influence. But they will be, and because of the demonic influence that is on some of these people and these organizations, truly demonic, they will defend or hide the truth about what Islamic law permits and what Islamic people are doing in the name of Allah to non-Muslims to this day. I've got to take a break. I'll be right back. What would Mohammed do? Islamic Terrorism Explained is the best movie series documentary ever produced on the life of Mohammed and Islam. How do I know? Because it's what critics are saying. John Moore, 
Radio host and author said, I learned more from what would Muhammad do about Islam and Islamic terrorism than I've learned from everything I ever read and watched in my entire life. Best-selling author Dr. Bill Warner said, What Would Muhammad Do is the best movie series, TV production on the life of Muhammad and Islamic terrorism that has ever been produced. Friends, this is what the experts are saying. No one has ever done what we've done. I encourage you to get one, two, four copies. Call 304-289-3700. That's 304-289-3700. Or order it at the address or the website that you see on the screen. Friend, we have a series that will help you and those you love to have an impact on this country. It's called Insurrecta Next. That's Latin for revolution against the killing of innocent people. This is the history, the philosophy, and the theology of social revolution in America. We look at the Stamp Act, the Boston Tea Party, the abolition of slavery, the abolition of child labor, women's voting rights, the civil rights movement. All of them have this in common, courage sacrifice, dedication, and in-your-face tactics and rhetoric. That's one of the reasons that we've been losing the culture wars the last 40 years is because the bad guys are using these tactics and we aren't. We will send you this 14-part TV series along with these manuals for students, a teacher's facilitator guide for only $40. Go to 304-289-3700, 304-289-3700. This morning as I prepared for this program, I saw a news story and it made me feel like I was kicked in the stomach and all I wanted to do was sob. It was about four teenage boys who were getting high and they watched somebody walk, a, a mentally, slightly mentally handicapped man in his 20s walk into um, a lake and drown. And they filmed it. They filmed him drowning and he's screaming for help and they're all laughing. And they're not offering to help him, they're laughing. And then when he goes under for the last time, one of them goes, ah, oh, he just died, and, and they keep laughing. This is, this is a sick world we're in right now. It's, it's in many ways, it is the sickest and the most dangerous that it's ever been because of the speed of communication, the speed of information, the speed of travel, the types of guns that we have. There's so many elements here, the, the internet, the web, YouTube. They, they actually posted the video of this man dying on Facebook or some social media outlet. I think it was Facebook. <clears throat> That's the trouble we're in right now. We've got to really, we've got to ask God what we can do, how we do it, how we protect our children, how we equip our children. Because the options are fight, be enslaved, run and hide. I mean, there's not that many options. Become Amish, okay? So be, uh, be careful. I, I, I also want to ask your prayers and your help. For those of you who like this program, we need to purchase another computer, a broadcast computer. If you look at television and you watch movies, the computers that pull this off are mega computers. We need to get one with 12 cores, okay? Uh, suffice it to say new, that they're between eight and $10,000. We can buy a used one for about $3,500, and that's what we intend to do. So if you're a regular viewer of this program and you can help us with a $500 or $1,000 or $100 gift, please go to my website, randallterry.com, and make the, uh, make the donation. Or you can call and talk to my office manager. Uh, put the number up on the screen if you would. So call if you want to talk to someone. Uh, go to the website. But we need help to get this computer. We just don't have $3,500 right now. But if you believe in the program and you like what we're doing, I ask you to help us. God bless you.
again.